Eduardo Toto si can't go on private conversations. Toto, let me call you Toto tonight. Please do. Good evening. Welcome to Private Conversation. Glad to be here. Thank you. What is a scenic designer? A scenic designer is someone, in the simplest definition of design, scenery for uh, the theater, for the most part, but also can branch out to television and film. And cinema. Right. And cinema and cruise ships and ice shows and circuses. And all everywhere. Of which, all of which I do. But before we talk about scenes, uh, l l let's talk about New York. I'm really interested about New York. We've done uh, Jessica here, Hagedor. Oh, I love Jessica. Yes, I, I, I love her too. Yeah. She was so much fun. And we, we, we did David Wong, who's also based in New York, the playwright. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Golden course, Child. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Butterfly. That's right. He, right. Was, he, he, he was here on Private Conversations. How is life in New York? Well... Uh, uh, basically, life in New York is great, or otherwise I wouldn't have been there for, lived there for 32, 32 years. years. Yeah. It's great. It comes and it goes. Right now we're going through a recession, so it's not as much fun. But uh, to answer your question in a general way, I mean, I love it. It's you exciting. Do. You meet the smartest people. Uh, uh, smart, smart. It doesn't sleep, as the song goes. Oh, I mean the Minnelli thing? Yeah, <laughs> we don't think let's say about it, but you know, when you say New York, I mean, you know, it's it's well, it's yeah, a city you know, that's, so that's crazy, that's insane, that's wonderful, that's intelligent. Everything is about New York. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's insane in the best way. In the best and, way. And and it's uh, what I really love about living there is uh, the diversity of the people. So you come out of your apartment. And the respect for that diversity. Oh yes, absolutely. It's like um, everyone looks different. And uh, the, the, the culture, uh, the different cultures that you deal with on a daily basis, not to mention their food and everything else. And the openness. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's quite open. Uh, the few times, no, no, the many times, because every time I'm given a chance to travel, it, it has to be New York. Oh, uh, I it, don't it, blame it, you. It yeah. has to be New York. Yeah. No, really. But as, as a child, as a child, uh, I mean, growing up in the Philippines, did you imagine that you would uh, actually be living in New York? Not as a child, uh, but I don't want to make this a long interview. No, but that's okay. But, but, that's but, okay. But pretty I like much long interviews. Oh, no, no. As a child, I always, uh, I had this great grandmother who uh, would come. I lived in Bacolod, and she lived in La Carlota, which was an hour away. And there were three movie houses, each featuring a double feature. And she would come every weekend and watch all six, mov six movies. Wow. And who would she have with her? Me. And so as a And child. so you would watch six movies <laughs> in with a, the course of a weekend with wow. Madonna. She didn't okay. care how the rating, whatever, Mondokane, and all those films. I watched them all as a kid. And so I was uh, pretty much exposed to, really, for Hollywood and this wonderful world of, of musicals. And, and, and that, that, that made a deep, deep impression. And so uh, uh, partnered that with the fact that my mother was uh, in the theater, or was a lyric is, was, a lyric soprano. Um, and my father was an audiophile who loved musical comedy recordings. So that was my, my background. So uh, uh, flash forward to when I'm 16. And my father had this great thing that he did in our family. We were, we were lucky enough to have him uh, do, do this for us. So he made us travel by ourselves. And so when I was 16, my turn, I went uh, to Europe and to the US and I'm answering your question the long way. Love it. All right. And so I um, uh, went to 10 cities in Europe and then uh, about five cities in the U.S. Alone? And yeah. Wow. Well, with my sister, actually. With your sister. I picked, I picked her up in, uh, LA in uh, Pennsylvania. And, but you were 16. All right. Yeah, yeah I was 16. Very impressionable. And I got to Paris. And of all the cities I visited, I said, ooh, mm, nice. You know, I so said that was a possibility. And then I got to London. And I thought, hmm, and I went to see a lot of theater. I said, this is possibly it. But I tell you, the minute I got to New York, I just knew it. I just knew it. I said, this is it. I, I have to, this is it. There's no, no contest. Something about Can you verbalize that? Something about what? Uh, the in New buzz, York? the buzz in the air. Ibai, no? You've been there, right? I yeah. mean, like, it's, 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 it's quite a buzz, and it's, it's hard to verbalize, but it manifests itself in your everyday conversation with strangers. Like I said, they're smart people. They're attractive people. They're, 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 um, 
it's, a, it's hard for me. I'm stuck. But and, it, it, and it's a beautiful place for it's a beautiful place for for artists. For well, for theater people, for especially theater people, for, sh right. for show business. But surprisingly, because having come from the West End, for example, in London, mm -hmm. uh, which can also be uh, really appealing. I mean, to an impressionable 16-year-old mm -hmm. uh, boy. I mean, coming from the West End, and then you went to New York. But yet, it was you know uh, New York that caught your. Fancy. Well, but, th but that was the that was the seventies. Uh, was that seventies? Yeah, the, the, yeah right. early, early, and uh, uh, back then, with the British musical invasion hadn't happened yet. Kualapa. So you you, you saw a, a Broadway show in the West right. End, and then you went to New York and saw the same show, and that okay. no, no comparison, you know. I mean the, the the level of the of the Broadway musicals. Right. There was a time. There was a time that uh, people would say you have to be careful when you. I'm not talking, of course, about the artists in uh, intellectual circles of New York, who are, I think, the best in the world. All right. I can go to New York and stay in that bookshop, Strands. Yeah. <laughs> I can stay there yeah, yeah. forever. I can, you know. But um, outside of this, people would say, be careful. I mean, there was a time when you, you couldn't go to, for example, uh, Times Square and come out of that place alive. But still, people would actually go. I mean, it was a certain appeal, you know. Uh, 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 built in danger. Y you really know. Uh, it's not there anymore, actually. That's not there it? anymore. It's been Disney-fied Times Square. <laughs> But you know the bite is there with New York. You know it's it's fantastic, it's fabulous. But you know there's a bite to that kind of beauty, which I think remains to be its uh, most appealing uh, feature. Yes, and I think that's because of the diversity. Frankly, I mean people are more tolerant, they're more understanding of, right. of, of, of everyone's differences. And I use the word open, the tolerant, yeah. understanding, open, and believe it or not, polite. They hold the door open for you in New York, and they respect. I didn't know that. They do. They do. It's a trait New Yorkers have that few people realize. They respect boundaries, like like they s since we're so crowded, we, you, they respect space. Like there is a certain like three feet. That's my space. Don't come any closer. Until you said it tonight, I didn't realize it's it. It's true. But th th that's mm. true. That's true because uh, that's a small place, and then people respect space. Exactly. You but know, people opening doors, really. They do. Yes, they're quite polite. Wow. And and most people, New Yorkers are perceived as rude, but they're not. They're busy. They're always late. That's why they walk fast. And they want to be bothered on the street. See? Okay, now That's we understand. The That's why people just really move fast. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I walk fast. I walk like a maniac in Makati. They think I'm crazy because <laughs> I'm like racing all over the place. I'm just used to it. Okay, but when you come home to uh, the Philippines, you spend a lot of time in Bacolod. Yeah. Uh, how is it? I mean, how is it for, you know, from New York to Bacolod? Uh, I love it because it's totally different. I, I know. It's, it's uh, relaxing. I'm, I'm a, I'm a Bacolod boy. Where are you from? Samar. Samar, okay. I know, I know. I, I can relate to how you feel. So you don't spend a lot of time, I mean, I, correct me, you, you don't, I, given the choice, you would rather spend time in Bacolod than, let's say, in Manila. Yeah. That's a provinciano in us. Yeah. Because I uh, share that. Proudly provinciano. Proudly. Proudly. Right? Yeah. But you, you, you don't have problems adjusting, for example, to the pace suddenly of Bacolod, no? No, and you know what to expect, then you're fine, you see? Uh, I have a little problem adjusting to the pace of Manila because I'm expecting New York. Okay. You see, in a way, it's a big metropolis, right? Yes. So. Uh, and you get disappointed when you expect the pace of New York in Manila because you don't get that. Th correct. Correct. Yeah. The concept of Manila time. You know, so <laughs> there's a period of adjustment. The way, the That's way, right. you know, uh, you just have to adjust. As opposed to going to Bacolod and you know exactly what oh, to Bacolod, expect. Bacolod, you make uh, three big decisions a day. Like what to have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's it. Fantastic. Or you know, if you want a fourth, let's what beach to go to, right? Fondest memories. I mean, aside from watching movies with Lola. I mean, uh, uh, of of Bacolod. Oh, lots, lots. The first thing that comes to mind. Uh, watching my mother being fit in a costume as Mrs. Anna, in The King and I. Wow. Number seven. Which one was this? A production in Bacolod. In Bacolod. You you haven't forgotten that. Of course not. Even the Lagano, so Why do you think I'm a designer? I know. She I knew. Know. <laughs> she <laughs> knew. Look, she so knew which one of the five kids to choose to take with her. She knew. Uh, really? So she she knew from the very beginning, and that that is a memory that you haven't forgotten. And no. did you know that you wanted to be one? You you wanted to be a designer. I knew that I wanted to be in show business. And uh, I, as a kid, I, a kid with an overactive imagination, I was always drawing, always drawing. And my mom, see, I give her credit for everything, uh, saw that mm, this one, it's me and Cecile were the two 
the two artists in the family. Of course. The so she loves Cecilia. Yeah, yeah, she, she goes to ballet school. Yes. Me, piano, and uh, private art teacher. So mom school. knew, no? Oh, she knew. She knew. From age 7 to 11, just every Saturday, Mrs. Titai Haga, draw, draw, draw. And, um, and then I joined a group called the Genesius Guild, an amateur theater group, which was uh, the, uh, the likes of, we had the likes of Peke, Gal Yaga. Hi, Peke. And, and, yeah, hi, Peke. A dropping on this conversation. I hello. really know all those people. So we were all, Joel Torre was our, was our little Rufus in all the way home. And so that all sort of coalesced. And then I said, ooh, I like this. I, I like theater people. I like, uh, and, and since I was facile with, with my drawing, I started designing. I, I tried acting. I tried, which I was horrible at because I <laughs> stage fright, including now. <laughs> uh, I mean, it doesn't show. No, okay. really. You tried mm. acting? No, no, it doesn't. And then I danced a little. I, you know, I danced. I was a pretty good choreographer, actually. I directed, but designing. So, uh, you know, the sense that I'm getting is in the beginning, y you wanted to get into show business, but you didn't know exactly how it wa what it was, but you, you had this fascination for... Uh, I somehow just wanted to get involved in this wonderful in any way. world. You know, but I want to pay tribute to Bacolod, because even to this very day, it is a vibrant theater community. It and is. The band that has produced yes. a lot of some of the most... Uh, accomplished names in, in theater in, in this country. Yes. I, I, I pay tribute to you guys, to Peke, to all these people who have been involved in Philippine theater and cinema who have been products of uh, the Bacolod Community Theater. Well, thank you. Uh, it's quite simple, really. It, it, it's, uh, you know, it's sugar. Yes. It's, uh, and so it's sugar. Uh, it's sugar, and, you know, uh, it used to be called sugar barons, not anymore. <laughs> but, you know, but what that translates into is uh, a lot of traveling. A lot of traveling. Like yeah, but it's, it's also consistency. It's the dedication. I mean, like Pekka, for example, he's not tired teaching. You know right. what I'm saying? When, you know, he still teaches to this very day. When, in fact, he can afford to sit back and uh, perhaps direct a film uh, a year. But he chooses to go back to the academe. Yeah, no, not to speak for Pekka, but, but uh, you somehow have to share what you've learned. You sort of have a bit of a responsibility That's to, true. to pass it on. Otherwise, That's your life is Do you get that feeling? I want to go home to Bacolod and share my uh, expertise, my experience, especially yes. you, because Wh you have uh, the world. Which explains my trip here and my show. I know, and we're going to talk about it. I mean, you know, we the are. trip of the show, uh, we would find out exactly what Todd is doing here right now in Manila uh, mm -hmm. when we come back. Good right. evening, welcome to Private Conversations. My name is Boy Abunda, and you are invited to eavesdrop.